Welcome to part 3 of the lecture on uh, global register allocation. So, in part 1 we looked at the issues in global register allocation and we also discussed the definition of uh, what is global register allocation and the problem itself. We also saw a register allocation for loops which is based on the principle of usage counts that was in part 2 and uh, a very fast uh, linear re scan register location was also discussed. Now, we today we are going to discuss graph coloring algor based algorithm due to Chaitin. So, this is probably the most complicated and uh, most uh, you know uh, uh, efficient uh, register location scheme that is possible for um, programs. The formulation of the problem is based on graph coloring and the graph underlying the problem is what is known as the interference graph. So, when we say a interference graph we also need to mention which are the nodes and which are the edges in the interference graph. Nodes in the graph are either uh, the live ranges of variables or entities called webs. So, we know what live ranges are, these are the points at which the a particular variable is live. So, from the definition you know to the last use of that particular uh, definition. So, that is called as uh, a live range. So, nodes in the graph represent uh, live ranges of variables. Webs are extensions of these and uh, we will not deal with them in this uh, lecture. An edge connects uh, two live ranges that interfere or conflict with one another. So, basically if there are two variables and uh, both of them are active in the program at the same time, it is very clear that we cannot assign the same register to both these variables. So, the same concept can be extended to the live ranges. So, if there are two live ranges which are active at the same time they are said to interfere or conflict with one another. So, we add an edge in the interference graph between two nodes which are conflicting. And as I mentioned in the last part uh, we require both the adjacency matrix and the adjacency list to represent the graph. The basic idea is to assign colors to the nodes such that no two nodes connected uh, by an edge are you know assigned the same color. So, uh, you know if we assign the same color it implies that we are assigning the same register that is the reason why interfering uh, nodes cannot be assigned the same color. The number of colors available is the number of uh, registers in the machine and uh, k coloring of the interference graph can be mapped on to a graph uh, you know a register location problem with k registers. So, I showed you this example in the last part also. This is a two colorable graph that means, the program corresponding to this uh, graph actually uses only two registers and the allocation of the registers is in this fashion. The variable corresponding to this will be given a register corresponding to this violet uh, rather uh, light pink color. This is also given the same register this live range, but these two live ranges are given a different uh, register. Okay. This is a three colorable uh, program or the interference graph corresponding to the program and it is similar in uh, you know spirit. So, these two are given the same register, these two live ranges are given the same register and this is given a different register. So, what is the idea behind uh, Chaitin's uh, algorithm? So, basically the idea behind Chaitin's algorithm is one of uh, uh, you know a graph reduction. So, by graph reduction we mean picking up the arbitrary nodes of the graph which are which have degree less than k you know and then we remove the nodes. Okay. So, typically we pick 
an arbitrary node of degree less than k and uh, first put it on the stack. So, that is what this says. So, why degree less than k and why not uh, equal to or greater that would be the question. We will see the reason for this uh, very soon, but basically the idea is uh, if we remove any arbitrary node of degree less than k and then color the graph uh, of uh, with the remaining nodes and edges then we can show that it is possible to color the original graph with this node and the ed or corresponding edges included. So, when we remove the vertex we have to remove all the edges connected to that vertex as well and uh, this process may decrease the edges of uh, some other nodes and cause more nodes to have degree less than k. So, this is a repetitive process we go on doing it and we reach a point where there are no more nodes in the graph. So, that is one possibility that if we reach that uh, stage then you know we can simply color the uh, nodes appropriately we will see how uh, with an example. And the other possibility is at some point all the vertices have degree greater than or equal to k. So, in this case we cannot continue the reduction process further and we have to resort to what is known as spilling. So, spilling implies that uh, the live range or the variable corresponding to that particular node will not be assigned a register, but it will be actually placed in memory location all the time. So, it is not going to get a register at all. So, if uh, a vertex actually gets spilled then you know we are going to remove the vertex from the graph as if it was uh, a reduction process and then continue further. So, let us uh, look at this simple example to begin with the stack is empty we have this small interference graph and let us assume that there are 3 registers. That means, for the reduction process we must look at those nodes which have degree uh, you know 2 or less. So, node 1 has degree 2 this node has uh, degree 3. So, that is not eligible for the reduction the same is true for uh, 3 as well 4 also has a degree 3 and 5 also has degree 3. So, we are actually uh, you know restricted to node number 1. So, we when we remove node number 1 the 2 edges corresponding to this node number 1 attached to it are also removed and the node number 1 is going to be placed on stack. So, 1 is placed on stack. So, the dotted edges imply that they have been removed. Now, node number 2 and node number 3 have just 2 edges each because the third one is gone. So, we can pick either node 2 or node 3 and continue with the reduction operation. So, let us uh, choose node number 2 remove node 2 and the 2 edges you know attached to it. So, that leaves us with the graph uh, of 3 nodes 3, 4 and 5 each of the nodes in this uh, small graph actually have uh, just degree 2. So, any one of them can be chosen for the reduction process uh, uh, for the next step in the reduction process. Say we choose 4 we remove 4 and the 2 edges related to it 4 is put on the stack. So, we have 3 and 5. So, we remove 3 put it on stack remove the edge you know related to it we have uh, just node number 5. So, 5 can also be removed and placed on the stack now the graph is empty. So, this is a completely uh, you know reduce it could be reduced completely. So, the graph can be colored with uh, 3 registers the process of coloring the graph starts in the uh, order of nodes placed you know in the reverse order of the nodes that have been placed on the graph. That means, we start coloring with 5 then go to 3, 4, 2 and 1 let us see how it proceeds. So, we pick node number 5 and uh, that is restored to the graph. Okay. So, and we assign a color to it there are 3 colors that we have. So, node number 5 is given a particular color say green right. So, that is allocating it a register. Now, restore uh, node number 3 and the edge with it. So, we have 3 it cannot be given the same color as 5. So, we have we pick another uh, color from the free colors here and then assign the color to 3. Then number 4 is reintroduced into the graph 
along with the edges. So, it is connected to both 3 and 5. So, we need a third color for 4 which is available assign that to node number 4. Now, 2 is introduced 2 is connected to 4 and 5. So, we must give a color which is different from that of 4 and uh, 5 and that can be brown. Okay. Now, we introduce 1 again 1 is connected to both 2 and 3. So, uh, you cannot actually give the color of either 2 or 3 we can give one of the free colors. So, usually we try to you know assign a color which is more frequently used. So, that is 4. So, we assign 1 to it and that completes our uh, example. So, let us look at the steps in Chaitin's algorithm in more detail. The first step is to identify the units for allocation. So, in doing this there is a process of uh, renaming the variables which have, have to be undertaken. So, it is possible that the same definition you know same variable has more than one uh, live range attached to it. In other words it is possible that I define a variable and then have a couple of uses for that variable define the variable once again have a few more uses use uh, define the variable a third time have some more uses this can go on any number of times. Each of these definition use ranges qualify to be a live range on its own. So, we make these three live ranges as three different uh, you know variables in the program. So, that uh, the program now does not reassign a uh, variable you know uh, unless it is absolutely necessary. So, I will show you when it becomes absolutely necessary with an example. So, once the renaming of the uh, variables uh, or you know is completed uh, we have each live range having a unique name and uh, a live range is now entitled to get a register. So, let us look at the example. So, in this small example we have a equal to an assignment a equal to another assignment equal to a usage of a a equal to one more assignment equal to a usage of a and here is equal to a usage of a. The renaming process makes both these definitions as uh, s 1 equal to and s 1 equal to that is because the value which is reaching this a can be either from this branch or from this branch. So, even though these two are two different definitions we actually place them in the same live range and so this this and this together come into the same live range and therefore, they have the same variable s 1. Whereas, the second definition of uh, a here rather the third definition of a is not related to any of these and it can be assigned a unique name s 2 and obviously, the two users will also be marked as uh, S 2. So, there is uh, there are two live ranges here this is one live range and this is another live range. So, this has the name S 1 and this has the name S 2. So, once the live ranges have been uh, renamed we build the interference graph. So, we are going to look at the steps needed to build the interference graph very soon. After building the interference graph there is what is known as uh, coalescing of the copy instructions or this is also called as removing the unnecessary move or copy instructions. So, I will go give you examples of this as well. After that we color the graph that is the reduction process uh, is applied thereby we select the registers. Suppose, we get stuck during the coloring of the graph and the graph cannot be reduced further we need to sp uh, you know spill some of the variables as I mentioned. So, we spill we compute spill cause then choose a particular node to spill then remove that node simplify the graph add the spill code to the original program. And now, we again uh, do all these steps once more 
uh, you know uh, not here, but uh, this particular step from uh, building the interference graph onwards until the graph becomes completely colorable. So, let us now look at uh, these steps in more detail. So, this is the iterative process rename build coalesce is uh, in a loop and then uh, simplify is the reduction process. If it is complete then we select registers otherwise we compute the spill cost insert the spill code and go back to renaming building etcetera etcetera. If renaming is not necessary we could directly go to build. So, let us take a simple example for the renaming. So, we have x equal to 2 and we have x equal to z star 2. We have y equal to 4 and then we have w z and u being assigned. So, let us just rename them. So, this x gets s 1 and this x gets a different name called s 6. Okay. So, the others of course, could have been retained as it is, but just to make sure that the intermediate code is uniform, we have assigned new names to all of them. Otherwise, it was not really essential. Only this first x and the last x needed different names. Now, what about the live ranges? So, if you look at uh, the definition of uh, S 1 till you know uh, the last use of S 1 is the live range of S 1. So, from instruction 1 to instruction 5 we have the live range of S 1. So, similarly for S 2 it says it is from 2 to 5 2 and then S 2 last use is 5. L v of 3 is uh, 3 4. So, it is just that uh, you know instead of just one instruction uh, we have just said uh, the instruction 3 and the next one and uh, 4 it is 4 to 6 here S 1 is used and uh, 5 also uh, you know th there is no usage of uh, S 1 S 4 here sorry there is usage of S 4 here and then there is a usage of S 4 here as well. So, 4 to 6 right. So, then we have uh, S 5, 5 and 6. So, again instead of marking just one instruction we have marked 5 to 6 and the usage of S 6 will be from this point onwards we do not know about that. So, this is the way we calculate the live ranges and once the live ranges are calculated we uh, you know compute the interference graph. So, the nodes of the interference graph are the you know uh, symbolic registers unique symbolic registers that we have shown in the previous example. So, and the edges between these show the interferences. So, I will come to R 1, R 2 and R 3 shortly. So, let us focus on uh, S 1. It says it interferes with S 3, S 2 and S 4. Let us verify it with our uh, example here. So, when we say interfere you know we just check whether there is an overlap of the live ranges. So, for example, here this S 1 interferes with 2 because 1 to 5 and 2 to 5 they have overlapping ranges. And then uh, S 3 again you know uh, it is uh, 3 to 4. So, that also overlaps uh, with this right. So, so S 1 interferes with uh, S 3, it interferes with uh, S 2 and it interferes with uh, S 4 also. So, finally, we have uh, S 4 which is going from 4 to 6. So, that also interferes with uh, S 1 right. So, S 2, S 3 and S 4 see that 5 to 6 does not interfere with this and 6 onwards also does not interfere with uh, S 1. So, this is the way we actually look at the interference. Similarly, S 5 interferes with uh, S 4, S 4 interferes with uh, S 2 and of course, S 1 and so on and so forth. Now, so coming to uh, the of course, the colors would not have been assigned right in the beginning. So, that is important. Coming to these three uh, you know nodes which are marked as R 1, R 2 and R 3, R 1, R 2 and R 3 correspond to the three physical registers which are present in the machine. Whenever 
there is a constraint that one of the registers cannot be used or interferes for a uh, with a particular uh, live range then we introduce these physical registers and then add an edge between that particular live range and the register. So, in this case the constraint is that S 4 cannot be given the register number R 1. So, we have added an edge between S 4 and R 1. If there were no restrictions of this kind and any variable could have could be given any register then adding these three registers to the interference graph is not really necessary, but in the absence of that we need to add this as well. Continuing this uh, example after the register location or the coloring is uh, performed. So, uh, coloring actually uh, has been done very simply with uh, 1, 2 and 3 colors. So, for example, you know we could start with this push it onto the stack then start with this uh, you know then go on to this push this also onto the stack. We have 3 registers then you know this edge will also go we take out this and the 2 edges then we are left with uh, these rest of it we could take out either this or this and then uh, you know the other one finally, we take out this and uh, of course, we have already assigned the colors to R 1, R 2 and R 3 because they are physical registers. So, the reverse process uh, will assign the colors as I explained in the previous example. Having done that we could assign the uh, registers corresponding to those colors and rewrite the code in the form of uh, using registers. So, now R 1 equal to 2 and R 1 equal to R 1 star uh, R 2 indicates that uh, the assignment you know for the same variable is taking place in the same register. This is just a coincidence it is possible that uh, you know R 1 was assigned some other live range uh, you know once it becomes uh, not useful. Let us take uh, one more example. So, here uh, this is a basic block these are all basic blocks b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4, b 5, b 6. So, in this basic block we have a definition of uh, x and a definition of another variable y. Here we have a usage of x and then followed by a usage of y. Here we have a usage of x and then a definition of x this has a usage of x here is a definition of y a definition of x and a usage of y. So, if you look at the live ranges right. So, the live ranges uh, here are called w 1 w 2 w 3 and w 4. So, if you look at w 1 it says uh, def x in b 2 def x in b 3 use x in b 4 and use x in b 5 all right. So, this this, this and this these four together form one live range because uh, these are interrelated you know we cannot assign a different variable to these two ok these two definitions. Whereas, uh, this x now can be assigned a different live range because it does not interfere with any of these ok. The second one is here def x and uh, use x then the third one is uh, here def y and use y and the fourth one is again def y and use y none of them interfere with each other. So, they are made into different live ranges you know. So, once we have these different uh, live ranges they are associated with uh, different variables w 1 w 2 w 3 and w 4 the interference is also noted w 1 interferes with both w 3 and w 4. So, if you look at that red which is w 1 it is very clearly interfering with uh, def y use y that is nothing but uh, w 3. And then uh, you know it is also interfering with uh, the last one which is w 4 ok. So, here. So, this is uh, uh, the way we actually compute the interference graph. So, here is a, a description of uh, what I just now explained. So, create a node for each live variable and for each physical register in the interference graph. If two distinct live variables interfere 
that is a variable associated with one live variable is live at the definition point of another add an edge between the two LVs. So, this is what uh, I just now mentioned. If a particular variable cannot reside in a register, then add an edge between all LVs associated with that variable and the register. So, this is the you know extra that we do for physical registers. Then the next step is called as copy subsumption or coalescing, copy coalescing. So, what happens is uh, that the copy instructions which are present in the program for example, of the kind b equal to e this is a copy. So, whatever is in e is copied to b. So, both of them carry the same value there is no other computation. In the presence of such instructions sometimes it is possible to uh, merge the nodes corresponding to the live range of b and the live range of e. So, if we are able to do this merging then it is called as a copy subsumption operation. If the live ranges of b and e do not overlap that means, the there is no edge between the live range of b and the live range of e in the interference graph. Then obviously, b and e can be given the same register. So, if they do not overlap we can give them the same register. So, this is implied by the lack of any edges between b and e in the interference graph. I am going to show you an example very soon. The copy instruction can then be removed from the final program and we merge b and e into one node that contains the edges of both the. So, b equal to e is a copy instruction this is the original uh, interference graph and since there is no edge between b and e that means, the live ranges of b and e do not overlap. So, we could merge b and e into a single node. So, that becomes the node b e all the edges which are connected to b and e will now go to will connect to the node b e. For example, d c and a connect to node b. So, d c and a connect to node b e as well. Now, node f connects to e along with uh, a and d. So, a and d are already connected to b. So, they are connected. So, f also now connects to the node b e. So, why should we do this? So, before understanding why this helps uh, a few more examples will help to clarify the situation. So, there is a uh, live range for this old b then there is a copy operation and then the there is a different live range of the new b. So, here this is the live range of uh, e in this case the live range of e is actually overlapping the live range of uh, you know new b right. So, th this is see this and therefore, after we copy it is not possible to assign the same register to both the live range of E and the live range of new B. That means, we cannot actually get rid of this copy instruction. Copy subsumption in this case is not possible. What about this case? The live range of old B and the live range of E overlap, but uh, the L r of E and L r of new B do not overlap. Therefore, whatever is the value of E here can be safely assumed to be the value of B since there is no other modification to the variable E. So, copy subsumption is possible here because they do not interfere and in this case we can remove the copy instruction. So, in this case copy subsumption uh, you know is required uh, to be applied uh, repeatedly here is x, here is e and here is uh, old b or rather b. So, b equal to e. So, we can uh, do, do away with this copy operation because uh, b and e do not have any overlap. After this there is another copy operation a equal to b since the live ranges of a and b do not overlap we can do away with this copy operation as well and assign the same register to both a and 
So, in effect A, B and E are all given the same register, but of course, X gets a different register. So, this uh, shows that copy subsumption uh, perhaps should be applied more than once in order to get the best benefit. So, the coalescing operation coalesces all possible copy instructions the way I just now discussed and then it builds the rebuilds the graph which may offer further opportunities for coalescing. We do coalescing only you know for, uh, one instruction at a time and then rebuild the graph. Build coalesce phase is repeated till no further coalescing is uh, possible. Basically, coalescing reduces the size of the graph and possibly reduces the spilling operation. Now, we move on to the step of uh, reduction and we also provide a justification why reduction uh, is correct. Suppose, the number of registers available is capital R. If a graph G contains a node n with fewer than r neighbors, then the statement is that uh, removing n and its edges from G will not affect its r colorability. So, let us understand why. Basically, if G prime which is nothing but G minus n can be colored with r colors, then so can G. Let us see why. Basically, now you know from G from G we have removed a node and its uh, edges right now that is our G prime. So, we color G prime and definitely the assumption is it can be colored with uh, R colors. After this is over we look at the node n you know. So, now there are R minus 1 neighbors for n. So, they would have been given in the worst case r minus 1 colors. So, the rth color is still remaining we can assign it to n and thereby complete the coloring. So, the uh, important point is that reduction operation does not affect the colorability of the graph. So, after reduction if we are able to color the graph then we could have done it before coloring before the reduction operation as well. This is the justification for the reduction operation. So, if a node n in the interference graph has degree less than r remove node and all its edges from the graph and place n on a coloring stack. So, this is the reduction operation when no more ed such edges are removable we need to spill. So, what does spilling mean? Spilling a variable x, let us look at the fine print now. It implies loading x into a register at every use of x. So, the reason is we say x will not get a when we spill a node, it does not get a register. So, it goes into it is always resident in memory. So, whenever we use a variable x we will have to load it into a register at every use of x. So, we cannot do any operations without loading a value into a register that is why we want to move x into a register the at the usage point and then perform the operation on it using it. At the definition point storing x from register to memory is necessary because uh, finally, the value of uh, x must reside in the memory location corresponding to x. So, I will show you the effect of spilling very soon uh, effect I know the spill code that needs to be introduced will be shown very soon, but now let us understand how to choose a node that is to be spilled. So, that is done based on what is known as the spilling cost. So, the node to be spilled is decided based on the spill cost for the live range represented by the node. So, how do we compute the spill cost? So, here is the live range V, its cost is sum of all the uh, you know factor C star 10 to the power D over all the load or store operations in a live range V. So, this is the you know only cost that needs why are we considering only the load or store operations in a live range 
the point is if we spill a node then uh, you know at every use we need to load and at every definition we need to store. So, that is these are basically the use and def, def operations inside the code. Okay. What is the cost of each of these load or store uh, operations? It is c into 10 to the power d. c is the cost of the operation, it could be an addition or uh, you know it could be a multiplication or division etcetera etcetera. Uh, so, multiplied by 10 to the power d. So, d is the loop nesting depth. Why should we multiply it by 10 to the power d? Let us understand this by looking at uh, uh, loop nesting of uh, 0 that is the instructions are not nested at all in any loop. So, this d would become 0 10 to the power 0 is 1. So, that means, we are looking at only the cost of that particular operation that is uh, a load you know, for that particular operation. Suppose, the instruction is uh, present inside a loop, then obviously, the loop is going to be executed a large number of times. So, the number of times the use or def you know needs to be loaded or uh, stored will also increase uh, depending on the number of times the load uh, the uh, loop operates. The experimentation has shown that uh, you know the exact number of times the loop iterates is not really necessary. Uh, you know we could simply assign a number such as 5 or 10 or 50 or 100, 10 is just a number it could be 50 or 100 as well. It approximates the number of iterations of any loop. Okay. So, even if you place 100 here and evaluate the uh, you know uh, this cost function, um, it is not going to actually uh, make a difference as far as the register location is concerned. The cost will be obviously, different. We only want to differentiate the number of times the, the cost of a variable uh, which is used inside a loop as compared to the cost of a variable which is used outside the loop. And this d uh, is necessary to take care of the number of times uh, the uh, you know the loop nesting has been done. So, if there is a doubly nested loop obviously, then you know we need to have 10 into 10. So, this becomes 10 to the power 2. If it is a triply nested loop then d will be 3 because uh, the loop would be executing 10 into 10 into 10 thousand number of times. So, this is the way we actually compute the cost of uh, spilling a loop. Now, after we compute the cost for each one of the variables we compute another quantity called the cost v per degree v. So, divided by degree v so, and then take the minimum of these and that is the node which is to be spilled. So, this cost v per degree v kind of uh, distributes the cost to the various edges of uh, that particular node v. Okay. That is why that is what the division operation really indicates degree v is the number of uh, neighbors. So, we distribute it to the number of neighbors uh, uh, for that particular live range or uh, node v. So, once we do this uh, the obviously, the node that uh, has a minimum cost per degree is the node that is to be spilled, because any op uh, spilling operation which is very expensive should be avoided the minimum uh, cost spilling operation is the one which is to be encouraged. So, here is a graph which can be colored with uh, uh, three colors without any um, spills. Okay. So, that is easy to see and uh, as I mentioned uh, in the uh, early part of uh, this register location lecture, the graph coloring algorithm actually graph coloring is an NP complete uh, problem in general. And yeah, we have used a heuristic which is by way of uh, spilling the node when the graph coloring cannot proceed. And because it is a heuristic it has its uh, shortcomings. One problem is there are graphs such as this 
which can be three colored, but our heuristic uh, shows that it cannot be colored using three colors. So, here is uh, such a graph obviously, by doing a manual coloring of the graph we have been able to color it, but if we apply the uh, algorithm then you know it is very clear with three colors none of the nodes have degree less than 3. So, we cannot actually start the reduction process at all we have to spill a node before the uh, coloring process uh, reduction process begins. So, whereas, by uh, coloring like this we are able to color it without any spills. So, this is a shortcoming of the limitation of the coloring heuristic. So, what exactly do we mean by spilling a node? So, to spill a node we remove it from the graph and represent the effect of spilling uh, you know as follows. We reload the spilled object at each use that means, we introduce a load instruction for every use and we store it at uh, in memory at each definition point that means, we introduce a store instruction at uh, after the imme definite uh, af immediately after the definition is over. So, remember we have a load instruction in just before uh, usage and we have a, a store instruction immediately after a, a definition. Okay. So, it so happens that this creates very small live ranges for the load and store points. Okay. And again these you know we cannot perform any operation without uh, registers. So, this load and uh, store also require uh, registers they require they have small live ranges of their own which will also have to be given registers. And this is the reason why after the spill decisions are made we insert the spill code rebuild the interference graph and repeat the attempt to color. So, this makes sure that even the small live ranges get the registers appropriately. When the simplification yields an empty graph then it is time to select the colors that is nothing but the registers. So, I want to show you the effect of spilling here. So, this is our original example you know with w 1 w 2 w 3 w 4 as the 4 live ranges. So, let us assume that the variable x is spilled in the live range w 1. That means, just before just after this definition of x we must have a store instruction just before the use of x we must have a load here also we must have a load just before the use and just after this def we must have a uh, store. So, def store load use load use and again def and store. So, these are the small live ranges that uh, I have I actually mentioned you know this could be like x equal to something say x equal to 5 that is the definition right. And then we have a store instruction. So, we need a small you know uh, we need a register for doing this computation and then of course, the register will be freed after the store instruction, but nevertheless this is a small live range which requires a register for its operation to be completed. The same is true for this as well right and uh, even this I need a register to load the value of x and then use it here. So, this load and use requires a small is a small live range which requires a register this is another small live range which requires one more register. So, by spilling the variable x in this live range we have actually introduced uh, many more live ranges, but uh, hopefully the original interferences are gone and the graph is easier to color. In this case of course, the number of interferences is approximately the same. So, it does not help, but this is an example to show the effect of uh, spilling. Okay. So, the graph now will have 8 of these nodes rather uh, w 1 w 2 uh, you know 3 uh, 7 nodes and uh, the interferences between these nodes are also slightly different. So, for example, w 4 and w 6 they have an interference. So, we have uh, w 4 here 
right. So, this def and uh, use that is one of these and then w 6 is the small live range they interfere w 5 and w 2 also interfere. So, this is uh, w 2 and this def and use is uh, w 5 they also interfere and uh, there is no interference among the other live ranges at all. Then what do you mean by coloring the graph or selecting the registers for the graph or the for the program. So, we have a repeat until loop. So, all the nodes have been placed on the stack. So, we pop the stack get a live range colors used v this is a set is equal to colors used by the neighbors of v. So, neighbors of v have been assigned some colors then you know that is the set we are looking at initially none of the colors have been used. So, this would be empty colors free is all colors minus colors used to begin with all colors uh, will be become colors free as well. Now, choose any color from colors free and assign it to node v. So, once we have done this right the uh, you know we go back check whether the stack is empty then the next operation uh, you know the next live range is obtained from the stack and the same process is uh, repeated. So, convert the color assigned uh, to a symbolic register uh, to the corresponding real registers name in the code and um, rewrite the code with the physical registers. So, this is this is the coloring or selection of registers. So, let us look at a complete example starting with uh, a program uh, you know and then going through the various steps of building the graph coloring it and so on. So, this program has uh, many variables the i is a programmer defined variable whereas, the others are all temporaries, but still for coloring operation all the variables uh, are equal. So, we do not differentiate between programmer defined variables and temporaries. So, T 1 has a live range from 1 to 10. So, here is uh, the first definition of uh, T 1 and the last use of uh, T 1. So, that is 10 i has the range from 2 to 11. So, there is a definition of i here and uh, there is a last use of i here of course, this definition is also i. So, two uh, and uh, both these uh, uh, i's are given the same uh, live actually assign the same live range. T 2 is between 3 and 4. So, T 2 is defined here and the last use is here. T 3 is uh, 6 to 7. So, T 3 is defined here and used here. T 4 is between 7 and 9. So, T 4 is defined here and used here last time. T 5 is between 8 and 9. So, T 5 is defined in 8 and last use is in 9. T 6 is between 9 and 10. So, T 6 is defined in 9 and then uh, you know star T 6 is a use a, a actually T 6 is used it is a pointer. So, star T 6 is the address where T 1 is placed. So, this is a usage. So, this is these are the various uh, live ranges. So, it is easy to see the interference right. So, T 1 and obviously, uh, I they interfere and uh, T 1 also interferes with uh, T 5. So, when, wherever there is an overlap with the range. So, T 2 interferes then T 3 interferes T 4 interferes T 5 interferes and uh, T 6 also interferes. So, T 1 is connected to all of them. Okay. So, it is connected to all of them whereas, T 3 is connected to only T 1 and I. So, T 1 has a 6 to T 3 has 6 to 7 as it is live range. So, obviously, I and T 1 are the only two which uh, interfere with it. Similarly, T 2 is connected to only T 1 and I, T 6 is connected to only T 1 and I and so on and so forth. So, let us look at T 4 
it is connected to. So, let us look at it T 4 is uh, 7 to 9 right. So, we have uh, uh, T 1 and i as obvious candidates. So, T 1 and i, but it is also connected to T 5 which is between uh, 8 and 9. Okay. So, this is 7 and 9 this is 8 and 9. So, they overlap. So, this is our interference graph for which uh, we need to assign colors. So, we start uh, you know let us assume that there are 3 colors 3 registers. So, we can you know uh, look at uh, T 6 T 2 and T 3 these have degree 2 which is less than 3 all others have 3 or more. So, we could simply take T 6 T 2 and T 3 and uh, place them on a stack. So, once we do that and we remove the nodes along with their edges the graph that is left is this graph. Unfortunately, all the nodes in this graph have degree 3 you know this has 3, this has 3, this has 3 and this also has 3. So, the reduction process cannot uh, proceed spilling will be necessary. Let us compute the cost of spilling for each of the nodes in this particular graph. Okay. So, if you look at uh, node T 1 then you know in the live range for uh, T 1 we have one operation which is outside the loop. So, that is uh, cost 1 and there are 3 operations associated with T 1 inside the loop. So, there is a T 1 here right there is a T 1 here and uh, there is another T 1 here. So, these 3 operations are inside the loop. So, the it is multiplied by 10 you know you, uh, based on our uh, uh, spilling heuristic. So, sorry here here. So, in multiplied by 10. So, the cost uh, total cost is 31. Similarly, for i we have one uh, operation outside. So, that is the this instruction number 2 and then we have 1 you know then uh, 2 right then 3 and 4 4 operations inside the loop. So, that is multiplied by 10. Okay. So, 40 plus 1 is 41 then the third one is uh, T 4 T 4 has uh, 2 operations inside the loop. So, T 4 is here and T 4 is here 2 operations. So, that cost is uh, 20 similarly T 5 also has 2 operations inside the loops. So, that cost is also 20. Now, the degree of each of these vertices is uh, 3. So, divide and uh, you know round off. So, 31 by rather truncate. So, this is 10. So, this is 14 and then uh, this is uh, 7 and this is also 7 right. So, we are really uh, rounding off in this cases. So, this also less than 0 0.5 then uh, take the floor otherwise take the ceiling value. Out of these, these are the two with least value. So, any one of them can be chosen for the spilling operation. So, let us choose T 5 for the spilling. Okay. Then the uh, we remove that you know we get actually this small graph which can be easily colored using 3 colors. So, now the coloring stack has T 6 T 2 T 4 T 1 i. So, all the nodes are placed here we can color them in the reverse order note that T 5 is not present here okay. it is spilled. So, it will be permanently in memory and it will be let us assume that our a temporary register can be provided to this particular node or variable during the code generation process. So, the global register locator need not provide any registers for this particular uh, variable T 5. So, otherwise the uh, coloring part is quite straightforward. So, we get the coloring as shown in this picture. So, after this the let us look at the uh, you know of course, then we rewrite the program with uh, registers T 5 is retained as it is this will be given a register at the time of uh, code generation okay, machine code generation. These are still not machine operations, but we have assigned physical registers. 
drawbacks of the algorithm constructing and modifying the interference graph is very expensive because the graphs can become very large. For example, the combined uh, interference graphs of procedures and functions in GCC in mid 90s the older version of GCC approximately has 4.6 million edges. So, these are extremely large. So, graph coloring takes a large amount of time. So, some modifications are possible. For example, we do not have to do copy subsumption if the degree of a node becomes more than the number of registers and uh, we can do optimistic coloring that is when a node needs to be spilled we do not uh, you know we push it onto the coloring stack instead of spilling it right away. So, and then try to uh, give it a color when we pop the node. So, let us look at an example. So, here say node 1 is chosen for uh, spilling we just put it onto the stack and remove the corresponding node and the edges. The rest of the uh, graph now becomes uh, colorable with three colors because they, uh, it is possible to do it you know spill 2 and then uh, sorry re reduce 2, reduce 5 and so on and so forth. So, let us say we finish the coloring for this part of the graph. Now, when we come here we find that uh, you know uh, there is a color free which can be assigned to node 1. So, this is again a heuristic which is called uh, optimistic coloring and it may not work in all cases. Suppose, we had assigned uh, two different colors to these nodes then you know in the uh, coloring process then this would not have had its uh, color free. So, this completes our discussion on uh, register allocation. Thank you.